Cool. So hands up who thinks computers are a little bit magical. They do stuff and we're not too sure how they do it. Does anyone think they're a little bit magical or have thought they've been magical in the past? Cool. Well, I'm going to teach you a magic trick today. So what I need is a volunteer who can make a 5x5 five five grid with these magnetic cards. So it could be white or it could be black and it has to be totally random. Who would like to do that? Oh, thanks, Ellie. You come up. You do that. Hopefully that's enough cards there. Cool. If you can just make a 5x5 five five grid up here, that's great. Now, while she's doing that, I want to explain a little bit about what's happening. So I said before that this is one bit. Each of these magnets represents one bit. A bit can be turned off or a bit can be turned on. Where else have we learned about bits before? Turn to the person next to you and tell them about that. And eyes this way. So bits, did anyone mention in their whispering, did anyone mention the word binary numbers when we learned about binary numbers the other day? Yeah? So these are bits, and these could be like the binary numbers, right? They could be on, or they could be off. Cool, has she got five by five? Yeah, cool, thanks Ellie. So I'm gonna make this magic trick just a little bit harder for myself, and I'm gonna put an extra column down here, and I'm going to put an extra row under here, just to make it hard. Okay. Right, I've done that. Now, I've got a really bad memory. And I can't see very well when I take off my glasses. Oh, I can't see it all now. Right, so I'm going to ask someone to go up and turn one of them over. Hands up who thinks I'd be able to guess where it is. Hands up who think that's impossible if you've got a bad memory. Or it's even impossible if you've got a good memory. Hands up. Okay, let's see. Riley, can you go up and turn one over? Everyone else, you need to check either that he is turning it over or you need to check that I'm not cheating and I'm not looking. I'll take my glasses off to be even sure. Everyone say, done, when he's done it. Done. done. Right. Hmm. Riley, Riley, Riley. Right or wrong? Right. Was it a fluke? It could have been a fluke, right? Thanks, Riley. Let's give him a big hand. Thanks, Riley. Okay, who thinks they can trick me? Maybe because it was on the bottom row. I'd memorise the bottom row. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Sammy, I'm going to go over here this time, so I'm definitely not cheating. You guys need to watch if Sammy's turned one over, and some of you need to check that I'm not cheating, and I'll even turn off the eyes at the back of my head just to be sure that's not happening. Done. Right, let's have a look. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Right. Right or wrong? Right. Was I right? Awesome. So if I get it right two times, is it a magic trick or is something else going on? Hands up if you think it's still a magic trick. Hands up if you think there must be something going on. Cool. Let's look at what is going on. If we had these just as we had them before and we go through the rows, how many black cards can you see in this row? Four. Mm -hmm. How many black cards in this one? Four. 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 Okay, now let's look at these columns. How many is in this column? all have in common? What are they? How would we classify those, co those numbers? Yeah? Even numbers. Hmm, hands up if you agree with that statement. They're even numbers and you are right. You are right because 
I said I was going to make it harder by adding the extra column in row, right? Did I make it harder or easier? Easier. Why did I make it easier when I added a black hard here onto this row? What was I, what was I doing? Um, you were making it add, so add one more so you could memorize them easier. Yeah, well if I didn't do that, how many black cards are there now? When I add a black card there, what am I making it? Taking it from odd to? Even. Even, right. So actually by adding that column and adding that row, I made all of the black cards even. So I was able to correct the mistake, correct the error, which is the one that got flipped over. Okay, so let's see how that worked. I'm going to actually take away the extra column and the extra row and you're going to tell me what to put. Now, I am also going to rub out the numbers so you've got no prompts. All okay? right? Are you ready? I want you to call out black or white and tell me what I have to do here. What do I have to do here? Black. All right, now all those rows are done. Let's do the columns. Okay, I want you to see what's happening here because if I put it white there, does that make that column correct? Yes. Does it make that row correct? Yes. So that corner there, it actually is putting two of the, the rows and the columns into place. So it's quite an important card, isn't it? Okay. So, now that you've seen how it works, who thinks they would like to have a go at doing this? Who thinks they'd like to have a go? Robert, do you think you can do it? Okay, so you're going to stand over there, close your eyes, turn off the eyes at the back of your head, power them down, and I need someone who's going to come up and change it. Shark, can you come up and change it for us? Change one. You guys look and check that he's just changing one. I'm going to look and check that Robert's not going to turn around. Cool. What are we going to tell Robert? Okay, Robert, come over here and we're just going to help you with this. So, this row here, how many are there? Four. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? Four. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? Four. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? Two. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? Three. So there must be a problem. <laughs> Let's put a circle around there. Because I think you're right. I think there is a problem because it's an odd number. Do we have to check the next row? No. no. Why not? Because we've already found the answer. We've already found the answer and we know there's only one error to detect, right? So now let's look at the columns. How many is in here? Um, two. Is that right? Yes. What about this one? Six. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? Four. Is that okay? Yes. What about this one? One. So there must be a detective problem. There is a problem in there. Let's have a look at that. So this which one. card was flipped, Robert? This one. Would you like to... There's a line around here and a line around there. So it already gives me a direct spot to where it is. Turn it over, good work. Okay, hands up if you agree with Robert that that was the one that was changed. Cool, let's give him a hand, well done. Cool. Thanks, Robert. So why are we learning this with a whole lot of magnets on the board and how does this relate back to the computers? Because what we've actually got here is a representation. This here that Ellie put up this is the data for a piece of music she's written, and she's now uploading that up to the internet. Now, if she's doing that, she's probably using phone wires and things, and so what we're doing is just adding a little bit more data to her file here, and her data, and what that's doing is if there's any interference, if for some reason a signal is off rather than on, 
It means that all of this together can be corrected in the computer and it stays the same for the person who's receiving it at the other end. And that's the same with your CDs and DVDs. So hands up if you've ever had a DVD where it's starting to glitch, it's starting to get pixelated, all the sound's not working. Right, so hands down, if you turn your DVD over, you'll see lots and lots of shiny and dull um, things on it. Each one of those is a bit, and it holds billions of bits on your DVD. And what happens is if you get a scratch on it, or if you get one fleck of dust, if you didn't have this extra data, your DVD would be of no use. You'd have to throw it away. But the, the DVD has this extra data on it, and so if one fleck of dust gets on, it can cope with that, it'll just correct it. And it has to be quite a decent scratch before it starts to pix pixelate. Have you seen the scratches? Like, have you taken the DVD out, looked at it, and gone, whoa, that's really dirty and scratched, that must be why it's not working. Have you ever done that? Cool. And you clean it, and it works again, right, hopefully? And that's because you've got it to a state again, that it can now read and it can correct all the errors in the detections. Cool, thanks.